Hello everyone, this is Daniel Fergus again, and today I'm going to be going over rendering. So let's go ahead and take a look at this timeline. I'm going to play this footage. And for, actually, I'm going to move the arrangement a little bit of the layout so you can see it playing while I'm close to the timeline, so we can see both things going on at once. So I'm going to be playing the footage and everything is fine. There is no problems on this video clip. If I move down the timeline though and try to play another file, it says it needs to be rendered and there's beeping going on. Now why is that? Reason being is that not all footage can be processed quickly through Final Cut. It isn't able to play it back in real time. And so if you want to be able to view this footage that has, for example, the render bar, go the render dialog going across it, what you need to do is process that footage first. And how you can tell if a footage, if footage needs to be processed or not is based upon these two bars. And if you can see here, I have two gray bars that are above this footage, and I have two red bars above this footage. The gray means it doesn't need to render. Everything is working properly and everything is fine. The red on this clip tells me that I need to render both the video, which is the top red bar, and the audio, which is the bottom red bar. And just to show you an example of that, I'm going to bring over this clip. You can see the top bar is red and the bottom bar is gray. So when I play it, I'll be able to hear the audio because I don't need to render the audio but I won't be able to see the video because the top bar is red, so I need to render the video. So what is rendering? Basically what rendering is, is it's creating another instance of the video file somewhere else on your computer so that it can play back a piece of footage that is more optimized for your sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and render this video clip. I'm going to highlight it and you can render it by going to sequence, render selection, you can render all, render only, these different uh, basically settings for the rendering. What I'm going to do is go ahead and hit command R though, it's just the shortcut for rendering the selection. And it's going to take a couple minutes, well seconds. And what it's doing is it is, like I said, is creating a video file somewhere else on the computer. But where is it going? Well, the answer to that is wherever your system setting video render, audio render settings are at. And you can find that by going to Final Cut Pro, System Settings. And you should have had these set at the beginning of your project when you did the video capture and audio capture. You also want to set your video render and audio render in usually the same folder that you're that you're using for your project and that's your that you're storing your project. So for this one, I have it under local storage render tutorial. And you can set it just by simply putting set and then going to local storage and then finding the name of your project. You should have a folder for your project where you store all your files and that's where this one is going. So let's go ahead and take a look at local storage and render uh, there it is render tutorial and you can see here I have a folder called rendered files it created it automatically and then it created a folder for the project and now I have a little video file here and if I hit spacebar to play it you can see it's the exact file that I had rendered out from my timeline and that's what it's actually previewing it on and you can see too it has blue bars no longer do we have red bars and everything will play back nicely so that's what you're doing when you're rendering and how you can tell if you need to render or not the easiest way to tell is if you go to the list view in your project bin of Final Cut and if you're not in list view you can simply right click in the blank space here and hit view as list and you can see this is my sequence that I'm working on right now, render sequence. And you can see the different properties that it has. And as long as those properties match up with your footage, for example, this black and white clip, which relates to the black and white clip below, and it's the clip that I didn't have to render, you can see pretty much all the um, settings are matching up 720 by 480, the frame rate, the compressor settings. Not all settings do you have to have perfectly right in order to be able to play without rendering but some of the important ones are like I say the compressor video rate and also pixel aspect ratio all these things you want to have right along with field dominance to um, be able to play your footage back smoothly and properly so it's being displayed correctly in Final Cut 
Now, you can see on my project, I have a bunch of different um, frame sizes. Uh, I have a couple different compressor settings. That is why on, for example, the XP Capture MP4, that is why I had to render this clip because the settings were not correct. It was of wrong dimensions. It had a different compressor than my sequence. And that's where we're running into some problems. So that will give you an idea in terms of getting um, your sequence set to your video footage, why you might have to be rendering. And you can always change the settings within your sequence to match your footage by simply right clicking, going down to settings, and you can see all these different settings are right here. And you can match up to your footage if you need to. And you can load a sequence preset if you know what the preset is for your footage. But the easiest way, I think, to make sure your sequence is properly calibrated for your video footage is uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new sequence, sequence two. And the sequence, by the way, is just your timeline. So bef the first time you put down a piece of footage, let me just grab one that I know is different. Um, this H.264. I'm just going to go ahead and drag it and put it down in the timeline. It says this clip does not match the sequence settings or any of the se sequence settings or any of your sequence presets. What you want to do is change the sequence settings to match the clip, and it will automatically do it within um, Final Cut. So it'll take care of all those properties for you, so you don't have to try and figure out what it is that it needs to be. So you can see now sequence two is now matching up with this uh, clip that I had originally chosen to put down there first. So 960 by 720, um, frame rate, the compressor setting, everything is matching up and that's why when I play it now, I'm able to play it back smoothly. Let me move that over so you can see. Fit to window. That's why it can play the audio and the video without any problems, and everything is nice. And in the other sequence, my original one, it wasn't. And I think that's all I'm going to show you right now for rendering. If you have any questions, you can always email me at dfergus at unr.edu.